We're gonna win tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, uh, I think we all in here, we're ready to play this game this evening. We understand the importance of it. This is as close as basketball gets to a local derby and there's a lot more at stake than just local pride. The winner of this match goes on to take pole position in the Eastern Conference. I'm looking forward to the Battle of the Hardaways, but also watch out for Orlando's Daryl Armstrong and Miami's Alonzo Mourning. Hardaways match up against one another. At the start of the game, the Miami Heat were ice cold as they couldn't make a shot of any kind. Now they go double team and Alonzo air balls to jump hook. And again, the Heat missed fire. They have missed their first five shots from the floor. But while Miami were not looking ready for this battle, Orlando sure were. Anderson for three. What a start to this ball game. Penny Hardaway had his game flowing early on. Hardaway for two. It is a nine to nothing start for the Magic. Late in the first quarter, the Magic scoring slowed down, so they started to rely on good teamwork. Excellent passing, and Outlaw throws it down. Pick and roll, and Doliak on the drive. But both of these teams are struggling so much in this first half. The defense by the Magic. And Porter jumped up into the air and had no place to go with the ball. What a pass by Armstrong. Oh, nice, Daryl. Real nice job, Daryl Armstrong. In the second quarter, Penny continued to wheel and deal as the Magic went ahead by 11. Been a tremendous first half defensively for the Magic as a team. Outlaw's got to shoot it. Give him two, it's not, not a three, but it is a two-point shot with less than a second to play. Not, not going out well with the dagger from the bench, from the corner. It's another tough, low-scoring Eastern Conference affair. Only this time, it's some poor shooting and not great defending, which is keeping the score so low. However, Orlando had a strong finish to that first half, leaving them with a 13-point lead. Miami are really going to have to find a spark from somewhere if they're to stop Orlando taking the top spot in the Eastern Conference. After embarrassing themselves by scoring the fewest first half points in team history, Miami needed to come out strong. Alonzo Mourning. And he now has nine for Miami. But uh, this Miami team is not going to fold up. No, they're not. Marley did not make a shot in the first half, but that didn't last long in the third quarter, did it? 8.26 to go in the third quarter. And the Heat still haven't missed a shot in the third period. And the Heat are six for six from the floor in the quarter. Brown confidently steps man, up and shoots in another one. Is this the same ball club or not? It doesn't look like it. Seven for seven. And Jamal will shoot that jump shot right there, but Bowler covers very nicely. Boy, oh boy, the Heat have tied the game on an incredible run in the third quarter. Shot clock is ticking down again. Save, save. Offering in there battling, but Mastern gets the rebound. And the Magic are as cold as Miami is hot in this quarter. Now the Heat have made nine of ten shots in the period, and they have taken the lead for the first time tonight. Mastern camped out in the lane. And they get an offensive rebound, and Morning gives Miami a four-point lead. Hardaway blows past Mastern, but then blows the shot. <laughs> Tim Hardaway with the three. I think a lot of people are in shock. I, I am. See some stunned faces sitting, up here. I'm sitting here like, what happened? The Heat are going to get the last shot of the quarter. Uh, with about four seconds to go, you want to commit a foul and force him to take the ball out of bounds. I don't want to give up an easy. Right now, commit the foul before you get in the act of shooting. You get the ball. What a turnaround at the Orlando Arena. A 36-point third period for the Heat after they scored 23 points in the first half. The crowd at the Orlando Arena were doing their best to get the Magic fired up for the fourth quarter. It may have been working as Penny was able to get Orlando back on the scoring track. But Miami were unfazed by Penny or the crowd as they looked to get the ball inside to their big man, Alonzo Mourning. Well, the Heat have turned it up and the Magic are just a little bit dazed right now, yeah. it looks like. As the game started to look grim for the Magic, they turned to their spark for Daryl Armstrong, who hit this moonshot to get the crowd on their feet. Then he got the team out and running as they tried to cut the lead even more. 
feet, missing a couple of shots. Outlaw runs the floor and gets the easy one. Orlando was starting to feel it again, so they got the ball into Penny's hands. Yes. That's a big shot. That is a big shot. With the Heat now only up by five points, they were looking for their top guns to take over the game. Very important defensive sequence for the Mandan. By the way, with the pull-up jumper, he oh, him. Oh, that's big. Tim Hardaway did his job, then it was Alonzo Mourning's turn. This jumper may have been a dagger in Orlando's heart, but now, down by six points, the Magic were willing to scratch and crawl to get back into the game. Nick looking for the three. And the loose ball picked up by Anderson. Armstrong, 4-3. He got it! Orlando now needed some strong defense to get the ball back. The Porter fumbled it away. Outlaw picks it up. Lots of time left, 24 to go in the ball game. Well, go for two, and go quickly. You have to go quickly. Why wait for the three? Let's go. <laughs> and he's scrambling, Armstrong. Oh, it's pinned. Now oh, that's a jump ball. Darrell Armstrong's shot was the Magic's last chance to tie the game. For the Heat, the 23 points they scored in the first half was the lowest total ever for a team who then went on to win the game. I said Miami did this small as well. It was more like fireworks from the Heat. They put on a real team performance with every player getting in on the act. Orlando, well, they had the opportunities, but they just could have made them count. And Miami may have just taken a huge step towards securing the Eastern Conference Championship. Man, if we would have lost, you would have bought us bad, bad luck. I would have blamed it on you. You know that, right? Well, you got to blame it on me now that I brought you all this. Morning. Okay, all right. Obviously, a disappointing loss, Penny. How do you feel about the whole game? Well, uh, we played a great first half. Um, we stopped there. Um, they came out the third quarter being a tough team. They are mentally and physically and took over the game and never looked back. So it was a very tough loss for us. Do you think you relaxed off a little bit when you had such a lead early on? Well, I didn't. I the mean, it seemed, like, it seemed like the entire team did. Um, you know, uh, they came out. We knew what they were going to come out and try to get back in the game in the third quarter. And all we needed to do was either tie them or beat them in the third quarter. And then we had them down. They probably would have given up. The first half, we couldn't throw the ball in the ocean. You know, we just stayed with it, stayed focused, stayed focused and knew that we had a whole nother half to uh, to turn things around. We did it. So what was said at halftime? <laughs> you, you don't want to know what was said at halftime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, believe me, what was said, you know, was uh, was uh, was very beneficial.